Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Bear With Me by Scott Donnelly Joshua Marshall lived with his parents in an old farmhouse. He was a boy filled with a sense of adventure and a curiosity that usually got him in trouble. The land they lived on, surrounded by vast fields of crops and trees, along with the old house they lived in, was his playground. There was so much to explore and discover on the property and in the house. However, there was one place in the house that his parents had warned Joshua not to go the attic. The attic was filled with old, musty boxes, moldy furniture, and broken toys, most of which had been left by the previous owners. Joshua's parents had always warned him to stay away from the attic, saying that it was too dangerous to just go exploring. The structure was old and weak. But Joshua's curiosity, as usual, got the better of him. One rainy evening, Joshua decided to just go for it. He wanted to see the attic for himself. He quietly snuck up the creaky wooden stairs, clasping a flashlight in one hand and his stuffed bear Milton in the other. Milton had been with Joshua since birth, and the vast collection of tears, rips, and stains on the bear were proof of their strong, lifelong bond. Milton was his comfort and his courage. The very moment Joshua stepped into the attic, he felt as if things weren't right. It was eerily quiet, the only sound being the soft patter of rain against the roof above him. Joshua's flashlight shone on the old boxes, torn clothing hanging from the rafters and broken toys that were haphazardly scattered around on the floor. But as he scanned the room, he noticed something strange, something out of place. It was a shadow, one that seemed to move on its own without the assistance of light. Joshua's heart raced as he directed his flashlight on the shadow, and to his surprise, he saw a pair of glowing eyes staring back at him from the shape of darkness. They were a deep, menacing red and flared up when his light landed on them. Shaking, Joshua stepped back, but the eyes followed him, leaving its shadowy lair and advancing on him. Stay, stay away! Joshua weakly stammered, barely above a whisper. A low, guttural growl rumbled in the attic, and suddenly the shadowy source caught up to its eyes and fused with them once again. The entity then took on a new form, transforming before Joshua's very eyes into a monstrous creature, swathed in long, shaggy black fur. It displayed rows of sharp fangs and extended its razor-edged claws out toward Joshua. Joshua's heart pounded in his chest. Panic flushed through him. He turned to flee, but the attic door slammed shut with a deafening bang. He was trapped by a horrible monster that wanted to eat him. The monster's eyes never wavered from Joshua. Then, without warning, it lunged for him. Desperate and terrified, Joshua clutched Milton tightly, hoping for a miracle. That's when he heard a soft, comforting voice. It was Milton, his stuffed bear, coming to life in his arms. The fear billowing from the child who had loved him unconditionally for eight years had sparked a protective life within him. Don't worry, Joshua, Milton said, his plushy voice filled with determination. I'm here to protect you. We can scare the monster away together. With Milton's loving encouragement, Joshua mustered up his courage and stood strong in front of the encroaching beast. Milton shouted, Go away, you creature of darkness! You can't scare us! Then something happened. The roaring beast came to an abrupt stop and slunk back. 
It became smaller. It let out a howl of agony before it fled back into the shadows, disappearing from sight. The attic door clicked and creaked back open. Filled with adrenaline, Joshua held on to Milton as tightly as he could, returning the protective favor, and raced downstairs. That night, Joshua lay in bed. Milton was snuggled up next to him under the blankets. His parents came in to kiss him goodnight and tuck him in. You haven't let Milton out of your sight all day, his mom noticed with a comforting smile. You guys are like best buds, his dad added. Even with all the tears and rips and countless sewing jobs, you've always loved that thing. Joshua smiled and pulled Milton closer. And he loves me too. Joshua's parents smiled and each kissed him on the head again before saying goodnight, switching off the light and leaving the room. The nightlight in the corner of the bedroom brought ominous shadows and dark shapes to life. Joshua scanned the room. The monster from the attic was still on his mind. Outside, the wind started to howl and the rain began to pick up again. Then the closet door clicked and began to creak open. Within the inky blackness of the closet, two red eyes lit up. Joshua's heart began to throb within his chest. As he prepared to be devoured, Milton had other ideas. The stuffed bear climbed out from under the blankets and stood at the end of the bed facing the closet. Really? Milton addressed the monster. You're seriously going to try this again? The glowing red eyes blinked rapidly and then sunk down, ashamed. As the monster whimpered in the dark, the closet door closed and clicked shut. Milton turned back to Joshua and smiled. I think it's gone for good now, he said, a twinkle in his marbly eyes. But, he added, climbing back under the blankets, I'll stay right here, just in case. Joshua pulled Milton closer and fell asleep. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.